We Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Vintage Super League Season 3, Week 2, Take 7. And uh, <laughs> I've got uh, Chris, who just kind of demolished Tom, in, in no small part, thanks to the die roll. Oh, well, the die roll, obviously, is always big. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I've... It's funny that everyone's been talking about, in the past week leading up to the restriction announcement, banned and restricted list, talking about Chalice of the Void, where I've been talking about restricting Chalice of the Void for, like, four years. Like, <laughs> it's just the most die roll dependent card, and it's just so dependent on the die roll, and it just, like, punishes moxes, and I want to play with moxes. Moxes are sweet. Like, that's why we play... I mean, I don't want to say that's why we play Vintage. I don't want to, like, force that worldview on everyone, but that's a big part of why people play Vintage, I think. No, definitely, and, and I think there's actually multiple things fighting against Moxes right now. Chal Chalice is certainly one of them. The other is, I would love to see Thirst for Knowledge unrestricted. I think that making it good to play Moxes and Blue Decks again would be pretty cool. Every time I try to build a Blue Deck, I always just want to play Gushes and no, no expensive cards. I agree, and, and it's really... I mean, I think that's been a bit of a... I mean, we've, that's been a bit of a problem in uh, a lot of formats recently where... You know, once especially when Treasure Cruise was like legal modern, and it just, and even before Treasure Cruise, like you turn these formats that you're either trying to do some sort of quick combo or a lock deck, and then everything else is just like cantrip, 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 cantrip. And uh, I w it would be more interesting to see a different draw engine. Yeah, looks like our video may have frozen. Actually, yeah. on the Skype call, it looks like it's frozen to me yeah, at that's least. What I think the Skype call we're seeing the stream. <laughs> So, yeah, I think, yeah, we're probably frozen. We can keep talking, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I just realized that on the overlay, they put a Hall of Fame next to your name. Oh, wow. People in the chat are, are not pleased. Really? <laughs> oh, all right, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> oh. That was by far, by, by far the biggest technical difficulty of the week. <laughs> yes, yes. There, uh, yeah, there's been a number of... Things I could call technicalities that led to me not being in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I've got, I technically made some incorrect plays and some key matches. <laughs> I, I, I suppose it's the sort of thing where you you know trying to track where you are at any given time, add up all the decisions, and there's obviously millions of them. Right. So. Or, or let's say maybe John Finkel technically thought he didn't need to vote for me one year because I'd get in anyway. <laughs> technically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, technically correct is the best kind. So, <laughs> yeah, back back to back to my match versus Tom. Uh, yeah, I mean, he really couldn't do anything. I won the die roll. My I mean, my opening hand was ridiculous. Game one, given that he didn't have a force will, like I went ancient two mocks, chalice on zero, trinisphere. So now he can't really do anything. And then I just have to decide whether I want to cast, or I just have to decide if I want to do chalice on one or trinisphere on turn one. And I don't think it makes any sense to do the chalice. So and then I, once I chalice on one, him, I, he almost can't get out of that. He doesn't have a main deck Hercules recall which Bob did last week, because the same matchup last week, Bob had a Hercules recall, so he could get out of something, in theory. The way Tom's main deck was, he couldn't really get out of anything. Yeah, um, and Tom's opening hand was actually a turn one kill. If he, if yeah, he that's what he one. said. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think he can mulligan that. I don't know. It's very close. He, <laughs> Tom, I mean, he doesn't have a force of will, and he's playing a deck that can't beat a sphere in game one. So Well, Tom, Tom has played, I would say, more than any other player in the Super League, Tom has played decks where their game one has, I mean, I thought, to be fair, I played Belcher, but Thomas made a lot of decks where game one, they're just common decks he just can't beat. Like, he's played decks that just couldn't possibly beat a Shops deck game one before. Um, yeah. It's just really risky at this point. So, so I think Bob kind of gave in and played the Hercules because at least then he has something to tutor for, he could naturally draw it. It's just a way to get out of the lock. You know, I, I don't know if Tom's deck could really beat Chalice on zero, Chalice on one. Yeah, it's... It's always interesting whether you play the Hercules and make your deck worse against every non-Shops deck to give yourself outs against Shops. And uh, it's a blue card. Yeah, I I've cut it sometimes and I've run it other times. It, it I really go back and forth on that. And uh, game two, I thought he, I thought he had a chance. Um, I mean, he obviously you know he went first. He had a black lotus, but it just once he gushed, that's like the kiss of death. Like when when the, when, the, when they gush. When there's like multiple series in play or Trinisphere or something, it's just over. Yeah, and he he kept a, a very good opening hand, Force of Will, Lotus, Double Preordain, and just he didn't end up actually finding any action. Right. 
You know, and I played a transfer. I had a choice one turn to play transfer or tangle wire. Um, transfer opened me up to potential trigon predator. Um, I didn't have a way to deal with tra predator in my hand, um, but overall, it's better. I, I, it is possible that if I just cast a tangle wire there and then transfer the next turn, he would never get out from under it. But I'm not. I'm not sure on that play. Yeah, I think he is. He maybe wanted to gush a turn prior, just because you know what's going to happen. He hit. He'd actually probed you and seen that it was coming down. Right. As it turns out, he would have gushed, maybe brainstorm, but I th think still missed. But it, it was a slightly higher chance than just doing nothing. Of course, given all your tangle wires, I don't even think Trigon would have beaten you. Right, and that's that was part of the reason why I knew I could do that because I knew there wasn't. Uh, I, I, I thought unless. Something unusual happened. I, I knew that even if he trigon and holding wasteland in my hand, it was um, hard to imagine him getting out from under the tangle wires. Although it's possible that I, I would not be able to deploy my threats fast enough to win, I suppose. Yeah, I, I mean, if the tangle wire eventually runs out, but you had a pretty threat dense hand, and especially since yeah. you drew, drew workshop a turn yeah. later, which is definitely yeah, yeah. a good strategy when you're playing the shop stick. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did have one cycle in maybe season one where I played a shop stack and just never drew a shops. A shop in like in any of my matches. That was rough. Right. That was season one. You went three oh oh three with workshops. <laughs> or oh, I, went, I think I went three oh three oh one two. Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're right. But uh, yeah, yeah, I actually picked up the shops this time for the first time. First time I've actually not played Force of Will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that I wonder. It's funny. I, I as soon as you, I heard that uh, the Mishra's uh, workshops price went up this week. Like I heard there was a spike in price, and then everyone started talking about Chalice Boy being restricted, and I wondered if that was just because they're like, well, if Luis is going to play shops, that's it. It's too good. we got to do something. I mean, I, I I guess I'll take credit, but I honestly don't think my influence is that broad. I played it in <laughs> the workshops in the Vintage Super League. It's <laughs> well, I mean, one of the vintages there to watch. True, true. I, I, well, part of it is also that three of us, three out of eight, did play workshops. That That's not a small percentage. That's right. probably closer to real-life percentages than most of the VSL seasons. Yeah, I think at uh, the, the Nizy tournament, I believe, was 25% shops at that tournament. You know, that was the big tournament on the East Coast a few weeks ago. It was like $100 entry fee or whatever. Um, oh, I think, that's awesome. I think a solid 25% of the... Uh, I think it was like 37 out of 149 or something were, shop, were shops. That's a lot of Mitchell's workshops. I didn't even know that many Mitchell's workshops existed. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think they have that many. Uh, all right, so what are we watching here? I think this is a, uh, a rematch of, of a, a two different players, but a, a, a rematch of something we saw last week, right? Which is what we're going to see a lot this uh, particular season, just because the... There's three doomsday, or sorry, two doomsday, three shop decks. So yeah, we've got Randy running it back against Doomsday. La last week, Randy lost to drawing a card that wasn't a blue spell or a land. That was he he needed any land or any blue spell. And he oh, I did the second bolt, right? Yes, that was pretty. That was pretty brutal for him. Yeah. All right. So are we going down to the game? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, we're there, right? Yep. We can. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I know we're a little laggy, so I want to make sure I'm talking about people. Let's see. Bob's got a pretty solid hand on the play here. It's not very fast, but he does get to go probe to get another card, then duress, and he's got Doomsday and Yagwell as pretty powerful cards. Randy's hand is actually not great, but on the draw, I would keep it. On the draw, yeah, he, you do have Force plus Flusterstorm to buy time. He really needs to draw like a fetch land or a mox. <laughs> he needs to draw a bad, a bad land, but I don't think he plays one of those. <laughs> what mo what moxes is Randy playing? How many moxes are in his deck? Oh, uh, I actually got the deck list open. Let's see. I don't not think that it's, he's... I guess it's not particularly important in this matchup. He's got, he's got the Grixis moxes. So, you know, one, one each of the red, black, blue. All right. Yeah. Like... I would keep both these hands. They're both, yeah, I mean, they're both pretty close to moles. I mean, Bob Bob's is like one land too heavy, kind of, and you don't really want Yago in the opening hand. Rainey's, of course, is one land too light. But th these are the kind of hands that actually can set us up for a pretty good game because neither player has a busted hand. For sure. I, I never would have thought that Bob's hand was potentially mulliganable. No, no. I, I don't think it, it, it's, it's actually a mulligan, but it's like you would ship it for a seven-card hand. It's below average for a seven-card hand. 
Is there any, re this is just a random, like, is there any reason for him to not fetch before he attacks any probes? I don't think so. Randy has strip mine in his deck, but first of all, you probably want to cast a rest turn one. Second of all, you've got three lands. If Randy's turn one is strip mine go, you're not even that unhappy. And you don't, and you really don't want to draw underground sea here. Yeah, this is like just a little play that obviously is not going to matter very much, but it's like a, this is like one of those spots where, you know, we always talk about how like kind of like new players or whatever kind of overestimate that the deck thinning aspect of fetching. But here I think it's basically free because I can't imagine you're not cracking that fetch. Yeah, um, it is. But I've never played Doomsday. Well, it's, it's basically free value. Like, yes... Deck thinning is not a reason to play fetch lands in like a monocolor deck. People tend to overestimate that. But this is just free. You you already know what, what's going on. Yeah. What do you duress here is the question. Bob is certainly going to cast it. My my guess is just force force is decent. Um, I could I could plus, say taking gush, because you can't you can well you've yeah. You've got a fluster storm that can counter both force and fluster storm if you need to. Well, one of the right, two. but are you worried about him going cabal therapy with fluster storm back up? Does that matter? It, it it does. I mean, these things are annoying. If Randy draws like a mox ruby, Bob's actually not in a very happy spot. If Randy doesn't draw anything and just goes land and go, then Bob's not too unhappy. Right. And Randy actually does have like some really like like nut draws, right? Like where he gets a. He, he, like, time walks into, like, a Taxium Probe and, like, red and black mana or something. I mean, that's pretty thin, but then he could, like, do crazy things, like do double Cabal Therapy on his time walk turn. He took Fluster Storm. Um, that makes sense. Oof. The second Cabal Therapy, not as exciting as the first. No. Although it does, it, you know, because it makes black mana. At least he can, at least he'll hit with one of them. <laughs> yeah. Might take a turn. But. All right, big draw step for Randy. Do you Flusterstorm this? I, I think I just snap off a Flusterstorm here. I can't imagine not Flusterstorm this. I mean, you saw his hand. Yeah. I mean, if he, hadn't, if, we, if he hadn't seen his hand. And Randy can't stop it. You, you're, you've got a decent chance of this just being a time walk. Because if Randy had a second land, he's going to play his land and cast one of his two drops. Yeah, and, and he can't, I mean, it's funny that if, if it wasn't, if it was Spell Pierce, I would consider, like, Force of Willing it. Yes. I think Randy would have, just to not get time walked. He can yeah. get his cards back with Cabal Therapy. So Bob can't go off here, though, even though he has Doomsday plus Gush, because he knows about the Force of Will. So he, he is going to have to draw something to, to kind of play into that. I wonder if you just go land go, planning on like casting a Yogwell next turn because the Yogwell Randy kind of has to force. Otherwise, you just get to go probe duress land. Just I love Yogwells like that. The, the value Yogwells are the best. <laughs> yeah, and you only yeah you only get blown out by like Randy does have the taxi probes in deck, right? I'm not just yeah. Yes, hey, the, yes. Only, the only the only way you get blown out is by like the exact draw of like the taxi and probe black mana. I guess there's a time walk over there, so. It doesn't have to be in the exact Right. Way. If Randy draws a land and goes time walk and then draws another land, it can go Pyromancer, Therapy, Flashback Therapy. Right. The problem is, if you gush here, Randy can just let the gush resolve, force whatever three drop you play, and then you end up with like one land in play and you're very far away from casting anything. Oh. I kind of like this passing. I can't. I wouldn't gush here. I don't see what it gets you. Worst <laughs> card in the deck. Randy's just drawing Lightning Bolt after Lightning Bolt. That's what he gets for playing that picture of Lightning Bolt, honestly. <laughs> I, I think those are Lightning Bolts. I, no, I don't know. I probably don't play that one, actually. I'm not, not on my VSL account. Now, I kind of like casting Yogwell now. So what, Yogwell gets him a land and a duress? And a probe. And a probe. It, it draws you three cards. Randy's going to force it. And then you set up a win next turn, hopefully. Man, what, is it correct? You have to force it because he's getting a duress, right? So I, I think I think you do. It's pretty tough to not force here. And this is where the fourth underground sea comes in handy. <laughs> so, uh, the fourth, wow, yeah. Four underground seas. That's not a lot of... Uh... 
What do you pitch here? Probably Gush. That's what I think too, but... I think it's close, though. They both do similar things, but if I draw a land, I really want to time walk, draw another land, and then cast yeah. Pyromancer Therapy. Yeah, it really does give you, like... It, it, like it, it, Randy's this whole game has had, like, it's, you know, a very lucky back-to-back -back hand could really destroy Bob here. And this is not an attrition game. Like, you, you, you're you fine giving up cards as long as you stop Bob, because you have a really quick clock if you draw lands. Yeah. Well, Yogg will in the yard means that... Ugh. Wow. Randy's <laughs> he's, just, he's, he's literally drawn all black and red spells with a basic island in play. <laughs> oh, boy. Is that <laughs> in the game? Absurd. Well, he already had the win with just Gush Doomsday. Oh, yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I um, it's whether he goes for it or not, but he knows about three of Randy's six cards. The vamp makes me more likely to want to go for it, though... Hmm. I wonder because won't he, just, won't he just vamp for a fluster storm and go off next turn? You could do that. The problem is you know about Cabal Therapy, and That's Cabal true. Therapy is gonna name Doomsday most likely. Doomsday and Gush are both really high on the list. But I guess if he Cabal Therapies you, you can vamp Gush and then that yeah, but then you lose your Gush. You could just land pass. If Randy Cabal Therapies you, then you just cast Vamp for like Ancestral or something. But it's actually it's tough be because you don't know what's in Randy's hand and you you feel like you're in a dominant position. You don't want to lose to the game to just one force of will. Although if he counters your Doomsday, you can just vampire it for another Doomsday, right? Yeah. That, that, so what Bob needs to do is cast Doomsday. If it gets countered, that's fine. You can go off next turn. You can just vamp for another one. Right. If it doesn't get countered, you just set up a Doomsday stack that wins through a force of will. Right. Like, because Bob has enough mana and excess cards, he can he can put a duress or a fluster storm somewhere in his doomsday stack. Yeah, one land for Randy would have been. This is once again. This is basically shops causing Randy to lose this game. So why else would you have Basic Island in your deck? Yeah, Basic Island is a card you have to play. I think you have to play at least one, but it is tough because if it was an Underground Sea here, then Randy could have been casting Cabal Therapies and the Blind Therapies would have done something. If it was Volcanic, it wouldn't have done much. Casting no, that's true. Volcanic would have done much. Done. It is pretty tough. That in uh, playing Doomsday, like, you've won the game and it still just takes, like, seven more minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Randy could concede. thing is, there's just not a ton of value in conceding. You don't... I guess when Bob gushes, you can concede, but you might as well let him play it out, see what he ends up going for, try to get a little more information. I see that the chat is concerned that I'm all aboard the Shops hate train. Um, I don't know if that's... I go back and forth. I mean, I play a lot of Shops... Um, and, and to be fair, I have seen more more creative anti-shop stuff outside of Vintage Super League. And of, and of course, Efro showed off some of that last week. Um, I, I do think that uh, VSL decks... There, there have been some VSL decks that are really weak to shops that basically no one plays in other Vintage tournaments because there's too many shops. Um, so I don't know. It, it doesn't make for the most fun magic. Yeah, I, I think that it's fine for shops to exist because they do. And there's the fluster storm, by the way, for, to make, for Bob making sure he doesn't lose to one counter spell. It's fine for shops to exist. I think having more pillars that keeps the blue deck honest is, is, is good. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie and say that some, some shops games are just not very interactive. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a lot more. It's a lot more fun when shops was like Slash Panther. You. <laughs> hey, like, I personally like Arc Archon Ravager cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The, you, the version of shops you're playing is is definitely more interesting. But I still think you get a huge percentage of your wins by just the, the lockout game, right? Oh yeah. The, the the reason you can play those cards is because the rest of the deck is so effective already that you just get to add a couple of those cards in as your like flex slots that try to kill them. <laughs> so. Bob 
gets a decent sideboard. I like boarding a Xanath Swarm and Duress in these matchups. Some combination, though, Duress is kind of... They're actually both kind of weak. Oh, <laughs> different Dooms index, still Xanath Swarms, though. Yep. It is kind of brutal that Randy's got a bunch of Cabal Therapies. Xanath Swarm's not good against Cabal Therapy. So having Randy attack from multiple disruption angles does make Bob's job t t a lot tougher. Yeah, um... Yeah, that's why I like therapy. I mean, even playing therapy in, in, in Legacy, like the last big Legacy turn I played in, I, you know, switched to one of the Pyromancer therapy decks. And it really does give you an angle that's so different, and it's so much harder for the combo decks to defend against that than just, you know, if they're just worried about, you know, they cast Defense Grid, and then you therapy their cards. They're like, oh, I guess the Defense Grid just felt more like a mulligan. Like, it just, and Xantis Swarm's the same way, like, It's just, yeah, like you said, the, the different angle of disruption is really... And it's a weird angle, too. I, I don't know. Cabal Therapy is tough to fight. It is, especially since it just doesn't get countered easily. It gets around counter spells because it just comes out as two spells. And Bob's is, Bob is playing a deck with a ton of four ups, so it makes Therapy even better. So, and Bob is playing a deck that wants to hold its spells until the one turn that it casts both of them. It, like, if we saw that game, Therapy against Bob's Hand of Doomsday Gush would have been great. You can't cast either of those until the turn you really want to go off. Right. Let's take a look at Randy's deck. Let's see if he is sideboarding a whole lot here. I can't imagine he's got a lot, though. The The way the Delver decks are built or the Pyromancer decks are built, they, they have all sideboards against their horrible matchups, and Doomsday is not one of their horrible matchups. Like, Randy's going to side in a Pyroblast, I guess, for a Lightning Bolt. <laughs> uh, I still... I'm still not sure on the whole like Graf Digger's Cage versus Lightning Bolt thing. I mean, I, Randy, Randy has Snapcasters though, so I guess he can't. Yeah, you only board in cages, I think, if you want to take out Snapcasters or if the cage is like right. devastating, which it's not it's, against against right. Doomsday. I forgot he had Snapcasters. If he didn't have Snapcasters, I think I would rather have Graf Digger's Cage than Lightning Bolt, but given that he has Snapcasters, that's uh, I go back and forth. I have done that swap before, but against Xanad Swarm, I guess I'd slightly rather have Lightning Bolt. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I totally forgot about the Swarm. Yeah, that changes things, too. And I, I've faced the same decision in Legacy many times. <laughs> my first round against Kai when I was playing Doomsday last VSL, I screwed up my Doomsday pile and didn't kill him, but I just had two Xanath Swarms in place, so he still couldn't do anything. I just passed the turn. <laughs> I was covered in bees. Yeah. Randy's deck is... I, I like Randy's deck. I, I, I would like to see him. He really hasn't had a game where he got to do much. His draws have been fairly bad. Like he drew his, you know, one of his reverse three outers to lose against <laughs> Tom, and then against Bob, he drew fairly poorly that game. Just never drew another land, though. Bob is mulligan to a zero land. Oh no, he looks like he's got some cards hidden over there. All right, I think it's only one card hidden though. Yeah, Randy has a good hand, though still no black matter, but he has no black spells, so I guess that works out. Yeah, Bob has no lands. Did Bob keep this hand? No. It looks like looks like not. Bob's not going to keep this hand. I would not uh, imagine. There are some cans like this you can keep, but this is not good enough. I mean, it's it's, got, it's already got Lab Maniac, the second Gush, like a Mystical Tutor. These are all kind of bricks. Oh boy. Randy's got a great hand for a blue mirror. It's not an insane hand against Doomsday. It's fine. It's got a mental misstep, but other than that, he's got a bunch of card draw, which if Bob. Just dresses Randy and sees all that. Bob can potentially go off pretty quickly here. And Bob can already demonic tutor for Doomsday and has a dark ritual. So obviously oh. he has to get around that misstep. But if he can do that, yeah. And uh... my guess is though that Randy does misstep the preordain on turn one that I assume Bob is casting. Well, uh, he knows about the ritual now. Um. Ooh. Wow. That's going to be a quick dig through time. Yeah, because you can play turn one DAC here, which I generally like doing. Even even if it's just straight up mill for two, that just means you can cast dig through time on turn two. Yeah, Rand, I like this hand a lot more now because Randy is casting turn one DAC instead of casting potentially turn two DAC. And that just gives him basically a time lock on finding more counter spells. And what is he... So you, you want to... Turn one deck and then draw two, discard two, right? Yeah. Um, I could see casting Preordain first, because if you hit Pyromancer, maybe you Pyromancer, but I don't I don't see a reason not to cast Dak this turn. I guess, again, you can look with Preordain and see if there's anything else going on. 
I mean, you can't you can't cast turn one and dig through time, right? It's not possible. No, I don't believe so. No, no, no that's eight mana, right? You can do it. Mm. See, now he can cabal. Now he can ask us, He can cycle on us to cabal therapy. It's his only source of black. I yeah. feel like I think you can cabal therapy on turn two because you can you can misstep on turn one. I mean, it depends what the other card is here, but if you if you if you play Dak, ideally you dig into a black source. You do want cabal therapy, but you don't really want to sack Lotus to cast it because then you're just not doing anything else. What's Looks like Randy's that? actually binning it. Wow. He's keeping a force of will instead. Do you put it on top or bottom? You put the cabal therapy on the bottom. Hmm. Yeah, I like casting deck here. Your hand is good, but you, again, even if you're just milling for two, you're, you're you're still ending up in a good spot. And I think you are just milling for two, actually. Yeah, but I don't I don't know. It just seems like he can't really if he force a wells, he's down to just dig. Well, he's probably not going to have to force turn one. I mean, he knows Bob's hand. So, assuming that he casts turn one pre and you just misstep it, you snap it off, untap, dak, dig. Actually, yeah. you can just you can just dig first if you want, and then yeah, dak. That's pretty good. Like, this sets up you just seeing a ton of cards and Bob not really being able to kill you very quickly. You could let the preordain resolve. I I would be inclined to to misstep it, but you have to misstep it if you want to. Uh... If you want to dig before using DAC, you have to misstep. But it's fine to use DAC first if you really want to do that. I just don't think Bob's going to cast Dark Ritual for a few turns, and you can presumably just find more missteps. Right. You just no. want to keep trading cards here. Now in this matchup, do you uh, do you force of will the demonic tutor? No, I generally don't. It is risky because the doomsday deck does have a lot of duress effects, but in general, they're not getting cards that you oh. can't you can't deal with. Oh, still not very nice. Well, that certainly gives us more time. So one reason that I don't like playing Snapcaster Mage in these in these decks is you have to pay attention to when you delve. I like when you not you don't have to pay attention. You just click the top six cards. Yeah. <laughs> now 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 Randy's got to be like, all right, I guess I'll leave a preordain or a you know a misstep or or whatever. That is yeah. That's definitely the worst part about Tassiger. Is oh yeah. Tassiger is sort of like a scroll rack where you yeah. feel you feel compelled to make this. I gotta make the best decision. I can't just do something random here, even though many in many situations it's so unlikely to matter. But you still feel like I gotta make. And the decisions are not easy with that. Like, sure, you know kind of what you will get, but you have to leave like two other random cards. And yeah, or or sometimes you have to decide whether you want to over delve. And then if you're playing a format with like Gurmag Angler, you're like, oh man, I need to leave stuff for this. Like, right. I mean, I guess it's it's interesting. It, obviously, it's more. Interesting to have it's obviously more interesting to have it be a decision whether or not you, uh, yeah, what you delve. But sometimes it feels like a, a, a lengthy decision that doesn't end up mattering that often. Wow, he has mismatched force of wills. Oof. See, that's rough. I, Randy's just trying. All, all I'm saying is that he, he's just tempting the magic gods to, to not take pity on him here. I was going to ask where Bob's board went, but he actually doesn't have one. He has a hand, but <laughs> his board is, in fact, empty. Another period is not the worst. It's always a nice little card. But 
Randy's like so far ahead here. Okay. This is a spot where um, legacy storm decks play Cabal Therapy for for weird spots like this. Yeah. You can actually take care of multiple counters at once. Yeah, Randy's gonna be able to put this one away. Fairly soon. He has to find a Pyromancer, but, ugh, Treasure Cruise. Dak Faden is a lot better than I gave him credit for. I will admit that. I think just, well, the prevalence of Delve cards is what makes him actually so good. I, I, yeah. I didn't factor in well enough. Right, otherwise, uh, yeah, I was underwhelmed at first, um, especially given that, like, in some ways, I, I it doesn't still doesn't seem that good to me. But it, it, it bums me out because it's like made it so that like you can't even like Blightsteel Colossus feels like a liability now. Like between yeah. Jace and Dak, like it's just so hard. Um, yeah, you, you need an inkwell Leviathan. <laughs> yeah. I've done a lot of inkwelling in my time. Yeah, the tough part about inkwell is sometimes you like tinker out of inkwell and then just lose to a monastery mentor. <laughs> <sighs> yes. The other the other clocks have gotten a lot better since Inkwell was good. Oh boy. Well, kind of doing it. Bob knows about the Demonic Tutor and the Dark Ritual and the Tendrils, so he gets to just yeah. snap off whichever one he wants. Yeah. He can just win the game with this, like, Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, Randy can finally Cabal Therapy. Like, he's been waiting to do this for, you know, four games now. After his whole match last week, where he never Cabal Therapied once, I don't think. The deck ultimate's not going to do much in this match. No, Rindy can like pyroblast a land or something like that to gain control of it. And the reason pyroblast is crushing red elemental blast in the head to head. But uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to see that. Yeah, it's really just a double looter. It doesn't really do anything else. It's not going to take an artifact. Well, Bob's hand is good. You know, Lotus, Ritual. You know, he almost has a Tendril's kill. Bob is close-ish to a Tendril's kill. Rain is at 15. Hmm. If Randy did not have Double Force of Will, Bob would actually win this turn. Yeah. I mean, it's like, funny you're talking about putting it away, but like... Jeez. The thing is, if Bob says go, it's not going to work out for him. No, he... I and mean, I think Bob's going to... Bob's best play is to put, like, land, tendrils back, and then just go Lotus, Ritual, Yogwill, Force Randy's Force, and then get forced again. But I don't I don't know if there's a way around that. It's not like things get better. Randy's drawing three cards a turn. Right, so what does Randy know about? He knows about the tendrils, the Dark Ritual, uh, and in the land... In the land, right? That's. I think that's it, right? No, he must know about one more card. Maybe well, he, he knew about the brainstorm, but. Oh, he knew about the brainstorm. Okay. In the chat, they're pointing out that the DAC ultimate does make Pyroblasting a Lab Maniac uncounterable, essentially. Yeah. When are they going to print like the four mana destroy a emblem card? I don't. I don't think they're going to do that now. 
I don't think so either. The problem is, like, Planeswalker emblems come up once out of, what, every thousand games or something? Like, I don't know. Maybe more in standard with Elspeth. True, more in standard than that. But also, how many times does it end the game when you just emblem? Right, they just... They do just concede. What they would have to do is, like, put it on a rider on an otherwise playable card, maybe? That's, like, still some kind of awkward text. Yeah. This is actually quite... So what What would you do if you you said you would put the tendrils and what back? Pro, if you're going for it, just tendrils and land, and then you just go lotus, dark ritual. Though maybe you're concerned about mental missteps. Maybe you put back the the dark ritual, and you just go lotus, yagwell. Yeah. Like, is there, a, is there a reason to burn the ritual if you are ex highly convinced your Yagwa spell is getting countered anyway? Well, if you're highly convinced it's getting countered anyway, you might actually just end up conceding after this this sequence happens. Randy's obviously feeling great about this because he knows he's going to come out the victor on this. Man. This is one of those... Yeah, lightning bolt. <laughs> no one's playing Fire Ice. I love Fire Ice. I always play Fire Ice. Yeah, I used to... I mean, I played a lot of Fire Ices in my control decks in vintage that no longer exist. I don't know in these decks that are really about... I, I don't know how much worse Fire Axe is than Lightning Bolt in this deck Randy's playing. Doesn't kill Lodestone Golem. True. And he gets to refill with Ancestral here. That's pretty nice. And Bob's top two cards are <laughs> tender, <laughs> Tendril's Dark Ritual. Yeah, they're not great. Oh, yeah. Well, therapy's not great here, so... No, it's pretty rough when therapy's not good because your opponent has no cards in hand. Yeah. <laughs> and you you have a Dak and a Gush and you're just, yeah. Have we had a lot of games where the, uh, I mean, there have been a lot of Doomsday decks in BSL. Have we had a lot of games where Fast Bond mattered in this deck? Not really, no. I, I played it myself. Tom played it. I don't recall it being particularly great. I wonder I if you could, yeah. I was just wondering, it seems like white is a better color against shops these days. I was wondering if... Serenity, Kataki, that sort of thing? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not a better color, but it's just an option. Plus, you could... I don't know. I'm just trying to think if there's anything Doomsday can do to be a little better in that matchup. Yeah, this, uh, Bob's, Bob is somewhat of an, um, no, maybe he's not an early conceder, actually. He knows his top card. Yeah, maybe, it's tendrils, which is not going to do a whole lot. Maybe he is thinking that this game actually isn't over because there's still some chance he can just do, like, a get lucky tendrils kill, like, the turn before he dies. He is at 18. It doesn't cost Bob anything to play out these last couple turns. It costs us part of our lives, but, you know, Bob's not concerned with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he shouldn't concede here. He's not 0%. No, no, I, I wasn't saying yeah. he should concede, obviously. I was, I was just wondering. I, sometimes the pain becomes too much. No, it's tendrils is... Not great. Randy's basically drawn his deck at this point. 
Yeah, and Randy, I believe, should be able to, he, Randy should be able to figure out that's a tendrils in his hand, right? Uh, presumably, yes. He's certainly going to know now. Now, yeah, now he can probably figure it out for the picture. The words. All right, there we go. Do you think Randy's sad that Bob conceded? Uh, I would have if if it was a few turns ago, but you, once you've snapped back to Ancestral, cast it's, big, it's just like you've already kind of had your fun. <laughs> um... Randy still has a couple bolts in. Yeah, he's really got a... Uh... Pyroblast came in, but other than that, yeah, not a lot of... Uh... He only has the one deck. <laughs> I did not even realize that. All right. Not that Dak's a great card in this matchup. He just happened to play it turn one on the play. Yeah. Yeah, I thought definitely... Uh... I mean, yeah, the fact that he drew one of his two dig through times with the one deck made a big difference. All right. Uh, I hate Mystical Tutor so much. I will side it up in these matchups. <laughs> yeah, it's not what it used to be. No. Especially now that Mental Misstep is around to, to, to snap off Ancestral. Yeah, Mental Misstep and the, and the fact that um, no one plays Balance, which was another common Mystical Tutor target. Both these draws are good, and not, we don't really know what either of them does. They're all full of cantrips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is like like what you said before about the other game, where the, their opening hands indicate a potentially great game. Yeah, this is just all this mono cantrips, basically. Seven can six cantrips and a force of will. Yeah. So normally I I don't misstep probes. But against a deck with Cabal Therapy, I'm much more inclined to do so. I wonder if Bob is going is gonna to do that here. It yeah. also depends what, what, what Bob's plan is. Is he going to cast Brainstorm? Because if he, he could cast Brainstorm in response, that way if Randy has a misstep, you get to misstep his misstep. And if he doesn't, then you can just misstep the probe. Yeah, you'd probably rather save a Brainstorm in response to Cabal Therapy. That's my guess. I think that is generally better. Um, it's also a question of is if you were going to Mystical for Ancestral, which I'm not sure you're going to, you you definitely save the misstep, right? Yes, and that given but that Bob has a mystic or a, a misstep and a force, he's got a reasonable shot of of going for the ancestral plan here. Ooh, there, there it is. is. There's a ball therapy. But Randy knows he has misstep. So, if you Cabal, do you still... The, the disadvantage hmm. of, of Cabal Therapy is that, it uh, you know, Bob is definitely going to misstep it, and you kind of want to set it up. And the he advantage is, is yeah, the, the advantage, and the Brainstorm too. The advantage is that if you Therapy and make him misstep, maybe Bob is less likely to go for Ancestral, because you don't really want Bob to go for the Ancestral here. Yeah, I definitely, I think Randy's more interested in making sure he hits a land drop turn two. Yeah, looking at a fluster storm there, which I don't really like here. Oh, in a mox effort. Wow, mox effort is great. But definitely bottom fluster storm and take mox sapphire. So Randy kept both on top. I this Randy did the same thing last week, and I think it really cost him. Yeah, I don't think you need to be that proactive. Fluster storm is a fine card. You don't need to aggressively find it though. I guess he's thinking with um, he doesn't have that many fluster storms, right? Well, he found a mental misstep. That's exactly what he was looking for, though. He did leave the fluster storm on top to me. <laughs> so, despite that, he still found the misstep, which is going to be decent here. I guess Bob still wins the ancestral fight. I think Bob is in. I would think Bob must be in trouble now, right? Oh, uh, I don't know. I If Bob goes for mystical ancestral here, Bob does get to, to cast it. He casts ancestral, Randy missteps, Bob missteps, Randy forces, Bob forces. 
Bob has ancestral plus brainstorm against Randy's hand of like brainstorm therapy. Now, is there anything um, that Bob could potentially miscal tutor there for that Randy would have to worry couldn't be misstepped? There, I don't think there is, but I don't think so. I I would definitely let mystical resolve there. I guess you're getting misstepped no matter what, but like you know that this is coming. The question is, do you want to trade? Force plus pre. I, I would probably trade force plus period in for force plus the gush or brainstorm. Uh, I think so. The problem is if you don't, then Bob just gets to three more cards to choose from when he wants to use his force. And I guess if you don't counter this, it makes your uh, it makes your cabal therapy better because Bob has less card, more cards you know about that he can't and he can't hide all of them. Right. Oh, I didn't counter it. And Bob drew two land on a period in, which is fairly bad. I do not like casting Preard in here. I think you need to leave up Brainstorm in case of a Cabal Therapy. Yeah, this is... So Randy's going to draw Flusterstorm, cast Cab Cabal Therapy on Bob. Bob's going to Brainstorm. Randy can just Flusterstorm the Brainstorm in response. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Then you just let him Therapy Gush. Would you, consider, would you consider Time Walking there if you're Randy? Hmm. I actually kind of don't like it because you don't know if you're drawing a land or not. I'd rather wait to time walk until I know I'm going to get mana out of it instead of just cycle it. I guess you could also... I don't think that time walk is what you would discard to um, remove to force a will, but I guess it's possible. Time walk I think is slightly better than preordain here because you're going to get to see a bunch more cards of the brainstorm, so the odds that you time walk into like a, you know, a spell, or like you brainstorm, time walk, untap, play a good spell is not too unreasonable. So now Randy's trying to decide if he's going to fluster storm the. I like it. Fluster storm is kind of a two for one. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is if if Bob Force of Will's here, he done will no longer have a card that Randy knows about. Yeah, but then you're trading two cards for. The oh, therapy. but he can't. It's fluster storm, of course. It doesn't work. Yeah. So. I assume Randy the names. It's the same. Yeah, you just yeah. lose it. I think you just let it resolve and let Randy name gush. The problem with letting. With gushing in response, is that Randy still gets to name Force of Will, and now you have no lands in play. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can do that. Oh, so Randy took the Force of Will. Interesting. I would have taken the gush, because now if Bob casts gush, you're not going to force it? I don't know. I guess the thing is, Bob is low enough on resources that Force of Will is not even great right now. <laughs> misdirection can be a dangerous card. When, when your opponent does not know about misdirection, and you get to snap like snipe an ancestral, it is insane. <laughs> the question is, how many preordains do you want? There's that there's that fast one you were talking about. Doesn't seem great here. Looks like Bob is keeping it. So given that you kept fast bond, I would start by casting gush. I think Randy's more likely to force gush if there's a fast bond in play, and I'd rather just cast gush first. It's funny how I I was kind of dismissing fast bond, but I almost would you be tempted to force a will fast bond? It's tough. If you don't force fast bond, Bob has, you know, at least four mana available off of it. Bob can protect it too. As long as you don't let him yog moss well, you're fine. But it's dangerous here though, because Bob can uh preordain. Actually, I, I kinda like preordaining first. Because if you preordain and find a big spell, then you're way more like another gush or, or a Yogwell or a demonic tutor or something like that. Then then you then you know you want to fight over fast bond. Bob's actually really close to just straight up winning this game. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it just seems like Randy should have been able to. Ooh, there's a merchant scroll which gets a gush. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely in on just going trop, fast bond, misdirect your force of will, land, land, merchant scroll, gush, go from there. Yeah, and we don't I, even we don't even know what the other preordained card is yet. Do you think there's something Randy could have done here? 
I would have can... taken the the gush with cabal therapy. None of this happens if you do that. And yeah. if you, if you take the gush, what is Bob using the force of will to do? And if you're Randy, you kind of have to force here, just yeah, because so. it's way too think... dangerous. Like there's so many cards that just lose you the game if this resolves. I think you have to force. Technically, you could try to force the follow-up. I don't think that's unreasonable. It turns out Bob has the misdirection anyway, so he can, you know, stop either one of those things. But Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty amazed that Randy is looking like he's going to lose this game. Well, Bob does only get to draw just two random cards, so it's not like the game is over. It's just Bob has a lot of mana, so if any of those cards have yeah. mana... But Randy's just going to have two cards. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Like, Randy's going to pitch the period in here, presumably, and then it's going to be brainstorm time walk against two random cards. Now, once Lab Maniac is removed, Bob could get in a spot where, like, a Cabal Therapy taking Yaw Muscle or Tendrils could beat him, or no? Oh, it doesn't matter because of Doomsday Shuffles, right? Yeah, Doomsday is like your own little time twister. Right. None of that matters. Bob could let Force resolve if Randy forces, and then go land, 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 lab maniac, go. Right. <laughs> I don't think so that's I, so I guess a card like Tormund's Crypt is actually better against Doomsday by a lot. Yeah, I still doesn't don't really love it. Don't, I don't love it either, but it doesn't affect your Snapcasters. It, it could potentially get them where they can't make the Doomsday pile they want to make. Yeah. Whoa, Bob gushed into two lands, so I think if I'm Bob, I just play five lands and say go. <laughs> um, would you, I don't think I'd let anyone know my, that my hand was at most two cards. I like being able to hardcast mental, uh, misdirection. Oh, you're right, you're right. Hardcasting might, be, might make it worth it. Well, Randy is back to being the favorite now. Bob is a million mana, but he... Lost his opportunity here. Randy's got to be feeling pretty good about the Pat Bob passing the turn here. Yeah. Seven turns of Lab Maniac beatdown. Probably not going to work. Do you think Randy should just... Uh... I would lean towards just casting Brainstorm here. Though you could also... You, you could just cast Preordain. Preordain and you actually want yeah. to hit... Uh, you have to decide when you feel safe enough to uh, keep a Pyromancer over like a Counterspell. Yeah. Well, Mental Misstep, Pyromancer are both pretty easy cards. Oh, always with the Lightning Bolt! <laughs> oh, really classic Lightning Bolts. Wow, that was brutal. You could brainstorm here, but you're not really going to do much. I wouldn't. I don't. Oh, man. It's it's really tough because. Ooh. <laughs> that... Misstep's good. You're going to get to misstep a brainstorm. If Randy misses on lands again, he's probably going to draw a light. Oh, wow. That's, that's a big draw. Now we have a clock. Because now we can go Pyromancer, cast Brainstorm, cast Cabal Therapy. And Bob is only at 10, so Pyromancer Lightning Lightning Bolt really fast. So Bob really does need to draw an action spell of some kind. Does Randy know about the Lab Maniac? I... Randy does not know any of Bob's yeah. cards. So the Cabal Therapy isn't amazing. It's not. If I Bob, I'm 100% misstepping that Brainstorm. Oh, I can't imagine not missed up in Brainstorm. Wisely pays blue. Now, if you're Randy, do you snap off Cabal Therapy just like name Doomsday here? Um, man, that's that's why I was saying that I don't I don't think therapy is that good here. I is force of will well. Let me ask you this. Would Bob have force-willed young Pyromancer? I don't think so. 
I, I think he's trying to end this game faster than that. I'm interested in what Randy's going to say. thing is, you don't care about Force of Will that much. I would probably name Doomsday. Looks like he named Force of Will. I mean, that that's like the second most likely card. No, there's almost nothing else Bob could have in his hand. I guess Doomsday, maybe you... You wouldn't. You would also just not be passing the turn. All right. So if Bob draws any any spell that ends the game, then he does get to win because he has misdirection here. But he he does not have a lot of time because now Randy gets to attack him for three, cast time walk, bolt him. Oh, he <sighs> can't bolt because misdirection can misdirect it to the pyromancer. Do you? Uh... So Randy's back yeah, on. Yeah, that's. He's, but he's, isn't that that might be worth it? <laughs> Randy's back on needing a blue card to win. And then, and right. So, oh, he got a blue card, so he can safely time walk. Yeah. And Bob kind of has to. He, he, he we can't count on a time walk actually. So I guess that. But Bob had would have had to have misdirected the bolt, which would be lethal here. Will Randy forget that misdirection can? It's easy to look at misdirection and just think forcible in a matchup like this. Yeah, but Randy does have force pitching Dax, so either way, he's going to be okay here. Yeah. Oh, that's a good draw. Well, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, is it seven? I didn't realize he's at yeah. seven. For some reason, I was thinking he was. For some reason I was thinking he needed one more turn, and he does not. Yeah. This is, uh... It's funny, uh, there's so many matches where, uh... Combo decks in various formats just kind of don't draw anything, like don't draw what they need, and it feels like such, like, a, an uninteresting game, but really if the combo decks didn't... That's just how magic works. If the combo decks didn't have that sometimes, it would be... Yeah, if, if Bob, you know beat all everything Randy had this game every time that there was a situation like this, yes, clearly the deck would be too good. Yeah. Randy's just running up the score now. <laughs> I think he's playing as... as I mean, he's, he's playing it safe. He's trying to make sure that he doesn't lose to like some combination of misstep or flusterstorm or whatever. Right. Now I get to see if I can stop a combo deck from going off. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Who are you playing against? I'm playing against Steve, and uh, the, the loser is out. Oh, boy. it's a lot of pressure. All that mana on Bob still didn't have enough where he could safely cast his Laboratory Maniac as a blocker and still be able to misdirect. <laughs> I know Randy is going to be quite excited to have won this match. Does not want to go back to full-time commentary and duty. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have two of our matches done here. We've got one of the, I guess not the actual finals yet, but one of the the, the pre-finals. Uh, we've got you, know, you, you and Eric Froelich on the top, and then we've got Randy playing the Winner of me and Steve, then me and Martel. <laughs> right. So we we will see how. Oh, actually, wait. No, I think Randy. No, Randy plays Rich Shea. Uh -huh, the the name confused me there. All right. So it looks like Randy's going to play Rich Shea, and then the winner of that match plays the winner of Martel plus the winner of Steve and my match. Yeah. So. Coming up next, we're actually going to have myself playing Steve Minion for a VSL elimination match. So we'll be back with that in a couple minutes. Good luck, Luis.